Welcome back to the Dave Gold Evolve podcast. Guys, on this episode, we've got Jonas Arab. Jonas is an authenticity coach, which is awesome because that's what we stand for here in the Dave Gold Evolve movement. So we're going to get really deep into topics such as authenticity, subjective reality, building trust with others, and doing it from a natural, authentic, pure place. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Jonas. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. Really a pleasure to, to be here. Amazing. So yeah. I'm going to start us off with a quote. Many of you guys probably know this quote, and here's how it goes. Your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most importantly, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Who said that? The great late Steve Jobs. And I think that it really ties mm. into what we're going to be talking about today, which is following your heart and your intuition in order to reach a truly authentic state. What do you think, Jonas? Yeah, that's very, very true. I love that statement, actually. And uh, I really do believe that, feel that in the end, in today's society, in today's world, this is like this one key magical element that we have to learn and have to embody more is like this inner knowing, like what is actually inside of myself at the core, what is actually guiding me? Because we are often lost in like our thoughts and like this and that kind of like idea of where you want to go, what you want to be, what you want, what you are. But actually there is this source, as Steve Shop said, there is this intuition there, this knowing inside of yourself that if you let this guide you, it's just going to be a completely different level. It's going to be a completely different experience because it's actually from inside of yourself. It's not some society or some other person or something out there. It's like coming from within guiding you. So beautiful quote. Yeah. Now, when did you realize that authenticity was something that you wanted to be a big aspect of your studies and your life and your teaching? When did you realize and become very passionate about this field? Yeah, so I've realized in my life that I wasn't authentic. I realized that I was basically, I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of different like people that I was meeting, that I was hanging out with. And I've realized at some point that I was only reaching out to them and was just spending time with them all the time because I felt like, I need to kind of like have people around me. I need to like have all this like interaction, but it wasn't actually coming from this authentic place of me actually wanting to connect with those people. It was more coming from an idea that I have to um, kind of like have people around me to, to feel good, to feel like I'm, I'm part of the society. I'm part of like all of this, but then um, it was actually coming from me um, not, not being connected to, to, who I actually am and who I want to be around with. And at some point I just realized that it's not nourishing. It's not really fulfilling me to um, basically be around people that I don't actually authentically really connect with. And I had this desire to really go deeper. And I've always been like a very deep person. I was always like, really like focusing on um, getting deeper and understanding and feeling what is really, what is really the core of, of myself, what is the core of other people. And what I started to realize is that when I'm really authentic with people, this, the, the feeling that like the connection that is, is going to happen is so much more fulfilling and it gives me so much more of life and enjoyment and peace that actually if I am really connecting with only one person in one moment, that is much more fulfilling to me than connecting with a hundred different people if they're not really, like if this encounter is not really authentic. And so that literally started me on the journey that I realized at some point, like I'm just running off to some friendships, but I'm not actually having those deep connections, those deep friendships, those deep relationships that I want. 
And this started me on the journey of finding out, well, how can I have those deep relationships? And this brought me to studying or kind of like exploring what it means to really be authentic, to really connect and to really feel inside of myself. What is this core that I want to share with other people? What is other people's really core essence that I can connect with on the other side? You know, I, I think it's a very esoteric subject that mm -hmm. many people just throw around the word authenticity, mm -hmm. especially in the social media space. And we've talked about authenticity a lot on this podcast. And on one level, I think that authenticity is in very, in very many ways, it's a buzzword that people mm -hmm. use to characterize someone or themselves in a way that will enable other people to like them. Mm. Maybe not because of who they are in actuality, but because of the way in which they want people to perceive them. Mm. So authenticity can actually, in many ways, be used to fake it, which mm. is in and of itself a trap. And mm. I remember growing up that my true authentic expression seemed to be very much suppressed. Mm. When you're growing up and the school system and society and family is telling you that you need to do things one way and there's only that one way to do things, then embracing what your heart and intuition is telling you to do may be nearly impossible. Mm. And so you go down this path of, I need to fall in line with society because if I do what my heart is telling me, there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. There will be punishments. I won't be able to do that without other people judging me. Mm -hmm. But what I've come to realize is that I'm not trying to create a legacy based off of what other people like or don't like, I'm trying to create a legacy based off of how deep I can go within myself and help others to do the same as well. Mm. And as William Shakespeare said, you know, you've quoted him a few times as well, no legacy is so rich as honesty. So how do you be truly honest and authentic without being confrontational or disrupting the societal views that people have of you? Mm -hmm. Well, so first, the one thing that I wanted to say, you're talking about freedom and kind of like people feeling that they're kind of losing their freedom when when they're really authentic because then people, like, people are going to judge them and so on. And it's got to kind of like in a way restrict their ability to be in society or kind of like express themselves um, or kind of like be accepted but actually authenticity really is the 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 most freedom you can have ever and i think it really comes from the experience and realization that if you are 100 percent fully true and authentic then and you really own that then you will have the ultimate freedom because you will know that whatever someone is telling about you, you're never going to be kind of, you're never going to be in a situation where you have to defend the point that is not true. Because anything you tell, like if you're really authentic, no one can actually hurt you because it can only tell the truth about you. So if, some, if I tell something really authentic and vulnerably from my heart to someone and this some, someone tells it to someone else, then I am actually free because the other person might know something about me which is very vulnerable, but it's true. And so that actually, uh, the truth cannot really hurt. But if it was a lie, and this lie is going to be told to someone else and someone else, and then they come back to you and say, hey, look, this, plus, but I heard this about you. And then you would have to say no, because it's a lie. And then you like get into real problems. But if you're really, truly authentic, you will at the core be free to really be yourself and no one can kind of like um, trap you or, or, or kind of like talk bad about you because they can only tell, tell the truth because you're only telling the truth. 
And so basically to come back to your question about how can you be truly authentic and honest without like hurting other people or, or making them, you know, basically offend them. Yeah. The, the reason why I ask you that is because I've seen as I've started on this entrepreneurial journey that as I dive deeper into authenticity and also give that gift to others, that it can create a lot of drama or confrontation mm -hmm. if you don't navigate in a more you know, diplomatic way. It mm -hmm. can be really heavy for someone when you authentically tell them how you feel about them. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you see something about someone else or you wanna tell something to someone and it's going to be heavy, but you mm -hmm. know deep down it's, it's your true authentic self? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the, the very important thing to understand there is that um, first you have to feel inside of yourself, what is it that you want to say and why do you want to say that? Is this, the fact that you want to say it, is it kind of like to, to be mean to the other person, to show that you're superior, to kind of like confront or whatever other reason that is not your deepest core reason or like your deepest core desire or is it actually you your deepest core desire of wanting to be true to yourself and wanting to share actual truth and that is like you have to distinguish between the two because if you're doing it from a place of um, lack from a place of like i have to be better than you i have to like confront you because i'm fucking authentic i have to confront you if you're doing it from that place the other person is consciously or subconsciously going to feel that the energy behind it is not like you sharing truth, but it's like you using truth to be mean. That's really when people are going to be hurt. But if they feel at the core that you're not doing this to be mean or to show that you're superior or kind of like using this mean of like authenticity to be mean to other people, but you're actually sharing it because you care about truth. You care about being true to yourself and you care about the other person being able to see like what you perceive to be true. Then if you really share from that place, people are going to be much more receptive to actually hearing that truth. That's the one thing. And the other thing is you have to feel inside of yourself. What is the way that the other person is going to be able to receive that truth? Because there's going to be some things you're going to want to say, or you're going to want to kind of like, tell people that they are not able to grasp that you're giving this as a gift and you kind of have to um, attune to their way of uh, like seeing the world, their way of feeling in that moment. So you can actually tell them um, kind of like, I am telling this to you to share and not to hurt you. You have to, like, you have to be careful in a way that you don't um, use like that you don't um, say something in a way that they're automatically coming up with their like um, with their like blockages or their kind of like filters of like, okay, you're just being mean kind of like trying to, basically this like this, this um, protection mechanism. But on the other hand, you will never be able to just, you're not responsible for their protection. You can just make a little bit like a nicer approach, but you're not responsible for their reaction. So the most important thing, I think, if it's just like you going about your life is really to feel this main distinction between, am I doing this to be mean at the core, like trying to be better than other people, or am I just doing this to share the real truth? This is really the most important thing. If you do that sharing from a real truth perspective, you will feel that you actually you're giving a gift to the world. Maybe other person is receptive to it or not, but you did it from actually wanting to share real truth. And that in the long run is going to be beneficial to you, to your life and to the world as a whole. Yeah. And just to take it a step further, not just sharing your truth, but actually showing your love for that other yeah. person. And if that is the core of your authenticity is your love and it's coming from a heart centered place, then it may hurt. You may create a bit of tension or drama in the process, bruise someone's ego, have to let down your own as well at the same time. But you'll know deep down that that was your truest self in that moment. That was 
innately a beautiful act that you took, no matter the difficulty that arose because of it. And, and many times authenticity, I think, will lead to defensiveness. It will lead to people feeling a little bit, hmm, I don't know about this guy. Why isn't he being nice? But we live in a world today where when you actually stand up for what you believe in and you drop the nice guy facade, you start attracting people into your life who are like-minded, who you can build a deeper level of trust with, who you can connect with on a deeper level as friends, as lovers, as family. And I think that is the power of authenticity. Yeah, is that 100%. it can free you and liberate you of any type of mask that you're currently wearing. We all walk around wearing not only our COVID masks, but many people walk around wearing a mask of what they want someone else to see, not actually who they are. And that may be also because people don't go deep enough into really figuring out who they are and what they really stand for. And so I wanted to dive into for a second, your views on subjective reality, Mm -hmm. helping people to wake up to what is actually going on in their life and around them and methods that they can use to better understand themselves. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So one thing I wanted to say on on the last note that you said, that like when you're speaking your truth, you're going to actually be in the long run surrounded by people that are more like-minded. They're actually able to receive your truth and actually give truth back and really be honest, honest and authentic and connect on that level. I think the one question that I, that has really brought me a long way is that, if I am feeling inside of, if I have something I want to say and I feel inside of myself and I feel that is my core truth and I say that truth and the other person doesn't like me or accept me for that truth or really like is going to give me a lot of shit for this truth and, and kind of like this, 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 not, just not receive it. Is it really worth being around this person? Is this person really the right person to be around with? Like, if you really ask yourself this question, you know, at the core, this is your deepest truth and you share it and the other person is not going to receive it well. Is this really the right relationship? And on the other hand, I am asking myself this question because I just went through this experience where I was working with someone and they did something that didn't resonate with me. And it was like a few times over and it, it started to dive into shame culture. And to me, my authentic self was I need to call that out. I need to say that's not okay. That guy did nothing to deserve that. Okay. But when I did, what did it spark? It sparked confrontation. It sparked drama. It sparked defensiveness. It sparked passive aggressive behavior. And so I had to think, wait, if I get into the same situation again, would I do exactly what I did? And I thought to a certain extent, yes. But also to a certain extent, I would try to leverage my authenticity with an even higher level of empathy for the other person where they're at. Yeah. 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 Very good point. It's like this balance between this, like being a fully authentic, asking yourself, if this is going to fuck up the relationship, is it still, is it actually worth it? And balancing this with actually being empathetic and what is the other person able to receive right now? And how can I make it more receivable for the other person without betraying my own truth? Yeah, and so the topic of subjective reality. um, Shall we dive into it? Do you think that's a good way to dovetail this conversation? For sure. Let's do it. Let's take a deep dive into subjective reality for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. So the main, the main thing to realize is that 
whatever you perceive in the world, whatever you see in terms of your circumstances, but also in terms of just looking at people, how they are speaking, how they are behaving, what they are doing, what they are not doing. Whatever you see in the world is not what actually is happening. Mm. It's only what you perceive is happening. And this comes from you bringing all of this baggage of like stored beliefs, emotion, thoughts, everything that you have experienced in your life that's going to shape, like it's going to put on some, some uh, like uh, glasses before, in front of your eyes that are going to filter everything such that you are going to see one situation completely different than someone else. And this is coming from the fact that you, you bring a different story to the table than someone else. And really there is like the, the key step there is to really realize that you have to take responsibility for your picture. You have to take responsibility for what is happening or like what you perceive is happening in your life and realize that this is a protection projection of what is inside of yourself that you see out there. And that is going to make you able to, um, well, kind of change your picture or change your reality and be what you actually want to be because otherwise you are a victim to what you see. Like you're going to propagate whatever you have inside of yourself if you're not aware of this. But if you're aware of this and you see that there are ways to change your filter, then you can also change your, the, the world around you. What are some tools that you use to help understand and elevate your level of subjective reality? So basically, the first thing you really have to do is basic meditation. And meditation is a word that everyone uses. What I mean in that context is basically starting to f like experience that whenever you have a thought, there is actually a thought in your head, but you are not this thought. Whenever you see something with your eyes, you see some image, but this image is not you. It's like you being able to perceive it. Whatever you hear is not what you hear. Um, so you actually realize that there's a difference between what you perceive and what you are. And that gives you the, the, the ability to realize that the way you think and the way you feel are going to affect what you see. Because then when you really get better at feeling and hearing your thoughts, feeling your emotions, then you will see that if you are in a similar situation at this point, but you have different thoughts and emotions, and then at some other point, you're in the same situation with some different thoughts and emotions, you, you, perceive, the, you perceive the situation differently. So you have to have this awareness that actually those emotions and thoughts that are inside of yourself are changing uh, what you perceive. That's the first step, like this awareness. And then the second step is that when you are in a certain situation, you have to make a decision. You have to change or make a step to change your emotions and thoughts. Because let's say you are in a situation, let's say you want to do public, maybe you're in like in around, like there's 10 people in like a group of friends and there's a situation that you should, you actually would want to say something, but you're feeling afraid. You feel this fear. It's like- You said uh, public speaking. We're going to have a public speaking uh, group mastermind call tonight. So this is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So let's say you want to have like, you want to do public speaking and then you have like this uh, group of like 10 or 20 friends. So you're just hanging around and you know, there's something you want to say, uh, but you have this fear. You, you cannot just go and say that. And then you're going to see, okay, first of all, you're going to feel, well, there's this uncomfortable emotion somewhere here, or maybe in your, in your stomach, you're going to feel this kind of like clutching or this, like this block. And it feels like you cannot do this. And then you have some thoughts like, what are people going to think if I say that? No, probably no one is going to listen to me and so on. And so you're going to realize that's the first step. You're going to realize, okay, there are some thoughts and there are some emotions and they shape the reality that I see here. Because if you put like a public speaker there, like a professional public speaker that's spoken in front of like, let's say you put Anthony Robbins in the same situation. Then Anthony Robbins is going to be like, 
hey, I got this awesome idea. 20 people wanted to listen to me. I have to tell this to everyone. And everyone is going to listen because he's just like so in his element. And actually the situation is exactly the same, right? Like this person, like Anthony Robbins, just going to have very different mindset, very different like thoughts, thought, like emotions and thoughts in that very moment. And then that is the, the first step. You realize you're aware of this. And the second step is to not resist what you what is coming up. Like or rather realizing that you're resisting it. Like if you're resisting the emotions, if you're resisting this fear, if you're resisting the thoughts, like I don't have to think those thoughts that are bad thoughts, then they're gonna stay. Because whatever you resist. Would you say that, would you say that acceptance? is the opposite of resistance yeah you could say that yeah because i also am using a similar progression with my life and with my students as well where they go from a step a stage of awareness to acceptance mm -hmm. and if they can't get down those first two steps they don't need to go any further right now it's just work oh, on yeah. awareness and acceptance and accepting everything around you, your financial situation, your physical appearance, your family that you grew up in, your world that you live in and everything that is coming up, the emotions, the drama, the news, the politics, the religion, and just be sit in a state of acceptance and from yeah. that point, your subjective reality can be completely transformed. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, exactly. So it's like when you go from being aware to accepting it, then you have actually done the most important step to transforming the situation. Because not accepting the situation is what is going to propagate the situation. You're going to have, you're going to find yourself in the same situation over and over again, because you're holding on to that. It's like your thoughts are kind of like a train that is rushing through your head and there's always going to be new thoughts. So it's like all those trains of thoughts just running through your head all the time. But it's like, if you resist the thought and it's like this train is running through, but you hold it and then it cannot like, it cannot just pass through. It's going to come, like it's going to stay there forever. But if you let that thought just pass through, just let go of like clinging on to this train of thought, then it's just going to rush through and there's going to be some new thoughts and what if the next thought is like, actually, everyone is going to love this idea. You know, it's mm. like the next thought could be something very beneficial to you. But if you then cling on to that thought, then you're also going to like, you're also going to have this resistance and you're going to like have to hold and you're like afraid you're losing the thought and they have bad thoughts again. Then the bad thought comes. So basically, it's just allowing to let go of this clinging on of this trying to like resist whatever is coming up to just flow through. And if you are resisting that, then you are basically making it stay. And all the bad things, but also all the good things, they're never going to stay. And if you try to make them stay, you're, you're, you basically destroy this natural flow. And you're going to either, you're going to either feel fear of losing or you'll feel fear of not going away, like these this bad thoughts. And so it's really this acceptance that's, that's actually going to be the step that's really making the difference and then when you have accepted mm. that there that it is there then it could actually stay or go it doesn't matter but then you're actually able to just let go because you accept if it's there or if it's not there and so you can just let this let this natural process of coming up and passing through this natural process you can let it unfold because emotions if you really feel and like if you really start to understand like experience this they're always coming up and if you don't resist them they're passing through but the thoughts are they always coming up and if you don't resist them they pass through it's really this natural flow but if you resist them they're not going to pass through and so it doesn't matter if you feel like okay actually i feel this clutching feeling i feel this like they're they're not going to like me whatever i'm saying like this is going to be a very difficult situation people are not going to give a shit about what i have to say and so on if you don't resist that then you can just let it go and there's going to be another emotion coming up maybe it's just maybe it's joy maybe something else but it's not gonna hold you back. It's like you realize that there is this flow happening, but you are beyond this flow and you can actually make a decision and say, I wanna 
have this speech now. I want to talk to these people. That's what I want to do. And all the emotions, they are just like phenomena passing through me, but they are not the core of my being. So I'm not dependent on the emotions being right. If I don't resist them, they're just going to be a phenomena in what I, what I, what I am experiencing, but I can go beyond that. And this really comes from welcoming and accepting those thoughts and then letting them go. And it's really like, it's really about learning this experiential like experience. Like it's not about the thoughts, like mentally you understand the concept, but then it's really like when you are in the moment, are you able to really drop into the emotions and, and realize that I'm actually welcoming that, I'm actually accepting that. It's like actually okay to feel fear. It's actually okay to have the thought. And it's like really going into that experience rather than being lost in like, yeah, I accept this now. Yeah, yeah, I accept this now. But actually feeling and getting into this experience of it. That's really the process to learn there. I feel like you just had a YouTube moment where you were in a flow and then another idea comes up and another idea comes up. And that's what happens when you accept and surrender and sit in a state of awareness because whenever you have an attachment, whenever you're clinging on to something, that is going to lead to a certain level of suffering in your mind. Mm-hmm. You're going to be up here instead of in here, in your heart. But I take it you've probably been through some suffering before in your life. So of I'm wondering course. what you've gone through maybe right now usually we do this in the beginning of the interview did a little bit differently today because i want to jump right into authenticity with you but let's take it back for a second now so Mm. where are you from where did you grow up and at what point in your life did you experience suffering and how did you get over that Mm. so i mean the first thought that comes to mind is that when i was really young i didn't i don't know how like four years old, seven years old or something. I remember like years later, my mother telling me like, even that day age, I was already asking like, wh- who is, what is God? And, and like, who is God? And what does this even mean? This is and where, always, where did you grow up? I grew up in Switzerland, in Zurich. Zurich. And is that yeah. where you are right now? Yeah, I'm in Zurich right now. Beautiful. And so uh, I've grown up in Zurich, uh, lived most of my life here, uh, a couple of uh, years abroad. And um, so then the, I always had this like inner fascination for, for like this deep, just like what, what does life even mean? Like, why am I here? What is this? What, like, what is going on inside of myself? Mm. Um, Was your mom like, what the fuck, Jonas? <laughs> are you like, <laughs> are you enlightened <laughs> or something? <laughs> so the, the funny thing is she, like, I think she, she really, she was really fascinated by that because she's also kind of like the kind of person that loves to go deep on those things. So we were mm. exchanging a lot of on that and I was able to really learn a lot from her as well. Um, but actually in the end it was, and that's often because, well, that's what a lot of people say. Like I was, I had really difficult moments in my childhood because I was like bullied at school. People didn't, I didn't fit into the group somehow or like I didn't really understand why uh, it wasn't really that bad but it also was really it was it was really bad I was like I was crying I was like I had really really tough moments and the one question that I was asking myself is like why is it me like what is what is going on with me why am I different than other oh, people that's an interesting one I, I I was just really connecting to what you said because I, I didn't fit in I wasn't necessarily like severely bullied But I would always go up to my room, hit the tennis ball against my wall as my parents fought. And I thought, I looked up, I was like, why, why me? And I know that a lot of people out there in the world resonate with that, that why me mentality. Mm, Exactly. Yeah. And so that is, that is really the question is like, I had to, I had to kind of like ask myself this question because I realized that my life and the way that I behave in, or that I'm treated in, in groups is not how I want to be treated. And it seems that there has to be something that's different about me than about other people. And so I had to inquire, like, what does it even mean to be me? What does it even mean to like, uh, like be accepted or, 
or accept myself and so on. Like this whole journey, just like this whole experience started me on the journey of wanting to understand more and wanting to experience more what it even means to be mm. um, me. Um, and, and that was, that was suffering. And, and I like a lot of spiritual teachers, they say, and that, that's my experience as well. Is like you, like the biggest transformation, just like the biggest kind of like thing that triggers transformation is suffering and like the need to do like you have like if you're in a situation where you have to do something like there's no other way then mm. you just you're more more able to surrender to actually doing something if the need is not big enough if like the pain is not big enough then you can just you can just be lazy but if the pain is too high like too big then you're gonna be you're gonna be like you're gonna be in a situation where you have to kind of do something but it's not the only way. Like you can also do it out of choice. Let's talk about that because I know a lot of people out there suffer with uh, procrastination. Mm -hmm. So they'll wait until the last moment to do something when they realize that if they don't do it, it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But others have a little bit of a better sense of discipline and mm -hmm. drive and willpower but willpower is more in the mind. So how do you take action on what you need to do without it being forced? Mm. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And so I think the main thing there to really, to, the, the key to really understand there is that why do you want to do something? Because if you, why is not, coming from your actual inner deep desire that you actually want to do something that is your true truth that you want to do something then you're not going to be able to connect to this part of you that just naturally has this curiosity and wants to learn wants to explore wants to de like develop and experience but because if it this like if the the why is like i want to feel um i want to feel love i want to feel respected i want uh, I want to have validation. I want to have um, something that is not at the core of what you want. It's like not a deep desire, but it's like a lack of something. If it's basically you think that you have to be successful for people to like you, so you're trying to get success, the energy behind it is actually you're lacking. You're lacking something and you're trying to fill this void. And if you're trying to do that, then it's going to be hard work because it's not coming from your core desire. But if you if you do it from this place where you realize actually i'm not doing it out of a lack but i'm doing it out of real fascination for example my in inquiry into like consciousness and how my inner processes work it came from well first it was kind of triggered by by some some pain but actually i was able to connect to this deep inner curiosity about it i did it because i'm curious about it i do this work because i love it because i feel fascination for that work i feel this desire to go deeper because i'm fascinated by it i'm not doing it to get validation or to get like there's of course like there's other parts maybe i want to have uh, validation want to have whatever else like security approval whatever but th at the core there's this fascination and so if you are doing something and it costs insane amounts of willpower the, the first step really to do it is to ask yourself what is my real core motivation why do I really want to do something that do that and then really go deep and see, is there actually a part of you that really, really loves to do that? There is a really like deep, actual fascination. that's coming from your core, from your heart, from your soul, whatever you want to call it. Is it there? And if it is there, then can you allow yourself to connect to that and take action from that place? That's really the main thing. And if you cannot do that, why don't you just drop it and find something you really want to do? Because then you're actually running after some kind of belief that's not going to fulfill you anyways. If you're trying to run after like a worldly success, but you're actually not fascinated, you're not actually curious, you're not actually passionate about this, it's only you trying to seek validation or feel good, then you're never going to be able to do that with ease because it's not even what you want to do. So you really have to go deep and, and see what is it, what is the real core reason why you're doing that? The question why is a fascinating one. It's much more 
easy to focus on the what or the how or the when. When you delve into the why, it starts to get a bit controversial. The why can be associated with purpose or North Star. Where are you headed? What's your direction? What do you resonate with? What kind of destiny or do you want to step into or legacy do you want to fulfill? But if you get too caught up in the why, you can end up many times going in circles when the answer is actually right in front of you and you knew it all along and you didn't really trust it because a lot of the time understanding the why and your quote unquote purpose may not be clear in your first 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of life. Mm. You won't know. And whether it's your universe that just hasn't opened up yet or your resistance to surrendering to what that why really is, it may be very difficult to understand your why if all you're trying to do is understand your why. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and I love so, that, yeah. So with that being said, okay, you just talked about it actually in, in your last um, answer, but you've talked about this a lot. It's something that you're really passionate about, okay? You wrote, to build trust in yourself, you have to expand and experience yourself in situations that you were previously unable to handle. Relax mm -hmm. into all the emotions and thoughts that are coming up and realize you can actually handle the situation and thus trust yourself. Mm -hmm. And so what sort of experiences have expanded your consciousness and your ability to dive into your why? Mm, very good question. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so the one thing that I've really learned and realized is that nothing that you try to understand from your head is actually going to make a real difference. You have to really go through a process of experiencing uh, yourself and living through experiences for you to, to evolve in any way. And so to find your why, when you come back to it, like finding your why, to find your why, um, this why and this like where you want to go, it always like the fuel there is experience because if you don't experience something you won't feel what how the why is even going to feel like how something is actually going to like affect the way you feel like if you go out and you're in a situation you feel this excitement you feel this love you feel this joy you feel this curiosity coming up inside of yourself then you will have this knowing it's like a mental chatter it's like in that very moment you just know yes I'm living this experience that is 100% true to me right now. I feel it. And then you don't have to ask yourself, is this, is this true right now? Is this what I want? It's, it's just, you just feel it. But if you're just sitting at home trying to like meditate and, and doing like whatever, like losing yourself in this like mental chatter of like, what is it like? Why do I want to do it? And so on. It's not going to be clear. So you have to go out and, 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 and experience. And so for me, there were a couple of things that have really brought me more to really um, understand myself. Like one is that I've studied um, engineering like at the Technical University in Zurich. Um, and it was really, it was really, really challenging. And I was like, I, I studied a lot of years and it was really, really intense. And I've really come to to realize a lot about myself in terms of like, what does it mean? Like, what was, does willpower mean? What does like really logical thinking, what does that mean? How is my body and my consciousness gonna react to like emotional tension to like stuff that I have to achieve out there. Otherwise I'm gonna, whatever, like have to repeat the year and so on. And those, those situations, which were really intent. Uh, there was like one situation in the second year of my university where I was so mean to myself in a way that I was studying and I, and I was also 
also like organizing semester abroad. I had so many hobbies that I thought I have to follow all of them. I did meditation every day. I was doing so many things at the same time. I was basically, I planned my whole week from Monday to Sunday. I had like every day, probably max one or two hours, which weren't planned. And in those one or two hours, I was usually eating. So I would, didn't have any non, not planned time. And so I was really, really intensely in like, basically doing, 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 doing. And that experience uh, led me to basically develop allergies, develop a lot of like physical problems and mental like problems that made me experience what it means to go to the extreme in terms of willpower and taking action and actually doing things. And so that was necessary for me to really see, okay, what is the relationship between um, doing something out of joy and out of like really enjoying something and doing something out of I have to do it and that experience really led me to to go deeper in what is it that I actually want what is it that brings me joy because all of the things that I was was doing there many of them I was really feeling joy for them but it was not coming from a joyful place that I was doing all of them together it was coming from like if I don't do all of that I won't feel that I'm worth anything and so that was really the first experience that really brought me deeper into like, okay, why do I do things? Because I, I went over the edge. It's like, I feel like life is really like this walk. Like you're walking on this crest, like on one side, you're doing nothing and you're just lazy lying around. And on the other side, you're basically doing way too much and like burning yourself out and like trying to seek happiness through doing. And here's like seeking happiness through not doing. But in the middle, in between, is like this nice place where you like have this perfect tension between you're doing enough, you're really doing enough to really be in tension and expanding, but you're not doing too much to like fall over and burn out, such that you're in this middle place where the, this actual experience is transforming into real, um, is transforming into like real, let's say, growth or real like expansion. Because there is basically, you can, re, you can also um, relate this to um, like, if you're going too far, you're going to create a trauma. If you're not going far enough, you're suppressing your desires. Mm -hmm. And it's in this sweet spot between where you can develop and feel like actually you are only developing in emotional tension that is handleable, like you're able to handle. But that's what I was talking in this video about how to trust yourself. It's like, you have to expand your comfort zone. People talk a lot about comfort zone. I don't really like this, this, this word really, because it, it focuses on, on, on like, like, otherwise you're comfortable, but you're not actually comfortable in the comfort zone. You feel really uncomfortable because everything is really dangerous and you don't do anything, but it's really like expanding the, like going a little bit over what you're used to experience such that the emotional tension is a little higher than usual. And then you're in this intense situation where you learn because you have to learn. Like if you don't learn in that moment, it's gonna be like, it's gonna fuck, like this situation is gonna be overwhelming. But if you go too much out of your comfort zone, you're going to create trauma. So you really have to just go that very nice sweet spot of like, I expand, I have more tension, but I'm still able to handle it. And there is where the real magic happens. There's where the learning happens. There is where you learn more about like yourself, about what you want to do, what you don't want to do, how you can do it, but you're not creating trauma and you're not sitting on your ass doing nothing, avoiding to do something. It's like this sweet spot really where you, where you, where your development actually really ex like accelerates. To me, what stood out in your response is the relationship between being and doing. And mm. we've talked about this a lot here with Harris and with some of the other spiritual guides, Ruse as well. And being constantly in a doing state is very dangerous. <laughs> Mm. you will get signs that you need to relax, that you need to surrender, that you need to let go. And you'll force yourself anyway to keep going. Mm. Yeah. How do I know? I have experienced this so many times. When I got out of the army and I was trying to find a job and improve my dating life, I pushed through 
the resistance really hard. Really, I fought it. Mm. And it led to a lot of stomach problems, IBS symptoms that they get elevated and escalated whenever I dive too deep into the doing state. Mm, yeah. And I don't have a balance between just flowing with what needs to be done mm-hmm. and letting it happen naturally. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people, they suffer with this and they struggle because they've limited themselves as to what they can actually be or do. And mm-hmm. they sit in a mind state which says, I can't do nothing. I can't take a break. I can't change my habits. If I do that, I'll have to drop this. And the answer is yes, you need to drop that. You need to change your job. You need to leave your environment. You need to get new experiences that you're resistant to having. Mm -hmm. Because without them, you will continue on the path that you're on. Mm -hmm. And your experience in life will only be a reflection of your reality. And as Joe Dispenza said, our environment is just an extension of our mind. When we change our mind, our life changes. Mm -hmm. So this is our final subject, but when we change our mind and we understand our why, how can we use intention and a law of attraction to manifest what we really truly desire? Yeah. Um, so just one note before for that on, on what you said. It's very, very, um, very interesting that you say that it's, it's true, like the, this polarity between doing and being. Um, but it's important to understand that in this, like in this, what I was saying, like basically the, the doing a lot or the not avoiding to do, this avoiding to do is not being. Being is actually the ultimate state of um, not avoiding. But if you're on this side, like of like, like, like of in your comfort zone, you're actually avoiding, you're not, you're not being. And on the other side, if you're taking too much action, you're also avoiding to be. So basically the being state is where you're not resisting this natural flow of life. And this natural flow would be to actually go into this tension and, and experience just this on a, on a, on a, on a side note. Um, and then to really go into this, into the last topic of, of how can you like set an intention and like using law of attraction or using the laws of, of basically what you, what is inside of yourself is gonna some, find some way to actually be represented in your life outside of yourself. Um, that really comes from this understanding that whatever you see out there is not what you see, but what you perceive through your subjective reality. And so if you want to create something, you first create in your brain, any house that you're going to build, you're going to create this like plan of like how this is going to build, like how big is this room going to be? And like all the measurements and so on. No, no, no. Let me stop you real quick because I know that some people will say, Oh, but Jonas, I thought you told me to stay in the present moment and not go into the future. Mm-hmm. Well, that is not about the present or the future. It's about, I decide, mm-hmm. and this decision is right now. The only thing is that between your decision, having that decision right now, and, 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 and having it in the future is that there's all this stuff coming up inside of yourself mm-hmm. that is going to make you not believe that this could be right now, that this could happen right now. So it's going to take some time, usually in this world, to for this decision to actually be reality. That's when you build a house, you're going to like design a plan and then you're going to build the house. And it's going to take some time. Um, 
it wouldn't and it's not it's not that it couldn't be faster but it's about how much can you believe how much can you just let go of all the stories that are coming up in terms of like building that house such that it can go smoothly but let's let's take something that's more practical for people let's take an example that's more practical um so so let's say that you want to manifest financial freedom in your life yeah okay. and is, right now you're in debt mm -hmm. that college debt you owe a coach you owe your family some money whatever it is okay you want to start to manifest wealth and abundance into your life how are you going to do that yeah so first thing you need to do is you have to set an intention and say okay what is it that you want i want financial freedom what does it mean what does it bring up like um so let's say you want to have financial freedom and you say okay you just write down this called financial freedom then what you have to do is to understand or like see inside like kind of feel inside of yourself see when i write down this goal i want to have financial freedom what does it bring up am i full of joy and bliss and, and just like knowing that actually yes that is me like i feel that this goal is what i am this is what i have this is, is this actually feeling of just joy and bliss and peace and i am this or is there any clutching feeling, any uncomfortable feeling, any emotions of like, I cannot have financial freedom. I don't even have an education. I don't even have a job. I don't even have this. I don't even have that. And all of this stuff is coming up and you have to really welcome that up and let that come up and let that be processed. As you were talking before in the public speaking example, like you have to let them come up and let them pass through to be seen, to be heard, to be felt and also to be let go, not to be clinged on. But what we usually do is that we don't let them come up, but they're still working in the background, but we're not aware of them. All the thoughts that haven't come up about the subject are already there, but we are not aware of them. And so to really have this law of attraction work, I don't like to call it that way, um, but it is because there's a lot of stories that people like have. It? What do you like, like to call it? Um, basically, it's just, the law of um, creation. It's like you are already it's like this, this reciprocity of like what you have inside of yourself is going to be outside of yourself. Um, and just, I don't like to use the word just because there's a lot of stories attached around it. Like so many people Stigmas. talking so many different, exactly yeah. in different ways around it. But it's in, in essence, it's like what is inside of yourself. If you set a strong in intention and you're really clear about it, it's going to manifest outside of yourself through subjective reality and maybe through some other means. Mm -hmm. I don't even doesn't don't have to go in detail in there but it is really that process of letting all the stories come up letting all the emotions come up and not resisting them letting them pass through such that you can get to a point where you feel complete joy and bliss and peace and harmony about this goal and just it feels like that's natural it's like if you want to have a girlfriend you don't want a girlfriend because you already have one so it's basically if you're in wanting and lacking and I don't have a girlfriend, that feeling of lacking is making it um, is making it a fact that you don't have a girlfriend. But once you have a girlfriend, you, you don't need to want a girlfriend anymore. You have it. And so to in order to create something, you have to get to this state where it's just like you feel this joy, you feel this peace, you feel this bliss, you feel this having inside of yourself. And to get to that point, you have to let go of all the wanting. You have to let go of all the stories of not, why you are not able to have that on, and so on. And that is really the key to do that. And then there are going to be the right actions to be taken that are naturally going to unfold because you're not resisting them. Those are those natural impulses that are just going to come up. I actually, I need to go there. Oh, that's if you want to have a girlfriend, oh, that's a girl I could talk to. Or if you want to have financial freedom, oh, that's a person I could reach out to for uh, maybe freelance job, or that's actually an opportunity. I could go have a public speaking. Maybe there's going to be someone offering me something. It's like, you're going to have those impulses, but if you have this resistance side of yourself, all those stories, you're going to resist those impulses. So that's what's really going to make the difference then. Jonas, you're a great guy. I love what you're doing. We have a lot of crossover in our work. I really resonate with the authenticity and also diving into um, your body 
and actually getting out of your, your mind, moving mm. into your, your body. Um, I'm sure someone that listened to this resonated with what you said. So who do you love working with and how can they reach out to you? Um, well, so they can reach out to me on um, embodied-authenticity.com. That's my webpage. Or I also have a YouTube channel where I upload weekly videos. It's also called Embodied Authenticity. Um, and so in terms of the people I love to work with, the one thing that I'm really looking for is that real, like, because if the student is ready, the teacher is going to be there. And mm. I want to work with people that are feeling in their heart that what I'm offering, what I'm talking about is what they're seeking for. And they are ready to take those, uh, like to make that step in, in their life to go deeper on their authenticity, on where they, where they want to be, on like going deeper in embodiment, in being real, in actually being what they know they want to be and just take the steps. I am just helping people to guide, um, to give them this room for them to really do what their heart is calling for. And I want to have people that know that they are on their path and I'm just the right person to give them, to allow them to have the transformation they want to have. And in general, my work is really about authenticity, connecting to the core of your being, getting more out of your head, into your body, into experiencing um, what you are, what you want, what you don't want. And then embodying that in life, like experiencing, going into situations in your life, where you feel emotional tension, where you feel there is an impulse you want to follow, but you, there's something that's holding you back and going deeper in understanding those mental, emotional processes that are holding you back and learning to transform them such that your authentic expression in the world is not hindered anymore, that you are able to follow up on those deeper impulses of knowing I want to do that, I don't want to do that, and just let that be your new kind of normal fuck yeah that's awesome i think that this is a great year to dive into that kind of work so if you resonated with jonas definitely reach out to him if you enjoyed this podcast definitely share it with a friend but we got one more question for you how do you want to evolve your life in 2021 yeah, so the main thing that I want to do is to let go more and more of all of my stories and mm. emotions and just let life unfold much more smoothly. Because this is what I am, what I found to be so powerful in 2020. Like there was nothing really going on outside because of the COVID stuff. And I had so much time for myself, but my evolution was so speeded up by this non, by this letting go, by this let, I was taking all this time to let go and even more and even more. And that is really what I want to expand more in 2021, mm -hmm. to just let go of all that resistance, all those stories, all those things coming up in terms of my intentions and just let, let them unfold. I don't have to take so much action. I have to let go of so much like resistance to just having and now really like life is bringing me opportunities much more easily i want to go deeper on that because i know life is just going to be really giving you what you want if you like go of all the resistance to it amazing well i think that this is just the beginning we're going to see you on the mastermind in a few weeks and yeah. it's been a pleasure connecting with you and getting to know you. So thank you so much for jumping on the podcast today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dave. That was really awesome. Really Amazing. appreciate this, um, this opportunity and to talk all of the, the people from your podcast and yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk soon. Peace.